Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, we're going to review some of these transformations that we've been talking about for years now. If you look at our first parent function, it is the rational parent function, 1 over x. So thinking about that, there are vertical asymptotes and um, horizontal asymptotes as well, and they start at 0. So there's like these dashed lines that our graph should never hit because an asymptote is just a line that they hang around and they get infinitely closer to that line. So that affects your domain and range. Your domain is basically all real numbers except for the asymptote. And remember, domain covers your x values. So the only thing that x could not equal would be that vertical asymptote, which is the equation, in this case, x equals 0. Well, the way I wrote it is silly. There's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So for the domain, we would say x such that x is not equal to 0. Because again, that is your vertical asymptote. It is the only thing that x could not equal because then it would create a denominator of 0. And you can't divide by 0. Now, for the horizontal asymptote, Again, it's a flat line here, so the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So as far as the range then, it's just like the x one. So you say, y is such that y does not equal 0. So that means every real number except for 0 would work there. Um, there are no zeros in this case. Remember, zeros are where it crosses the x-axis, which that is an asymptote, so there wouldn't be zeros in the parent function. Of course, if you transform that and move it vertically, then there would be zeros. So checking out the second one, the square root function, your domain and range, if you think about the, oh, I forgot to even draw the graph. If you look uh, with these, they start at like 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1, and then they just approach the asymptote. So this one cruises upward towards the asymptote and then to the right alongside that asymptote. Again, it would never touch it, but it will get infinitely closer to it. So that's the parent function. That is the function you would shift up, down, left, right. The square root function looks like this. So you'd have a point at 0, 0, and then it's like a curve up and to the right. So we're not going to have it go to the left because you can't square root negative numbers with, without using the complex number system. So like you'd have a point at 1, 1, so the square root of 1 is 1. Another perfect square is 4, so if you square root 4, you'd get 2, so there'd be a point at 4, 2. And then the only other perfect square that would fit on this graph would be 9. The square root of 9 is 3, so you'd have a point at 9, 3. So this is the parent function for a square root. So as far as domain and range here, domain, we're going to list it in interval notation, is the x values. The lowest x we hit is 0, and then it goes positive infinity that direction. The range is kind of the same thing, but that's our y value, so the lowest it hit was at 0, and then it goes towards positive infinity from there. Am I miss anything else? The zeros, it hits the x-axis there at 0. So the 0 would be 0, 0. Cool. All right, let's scooch over here. The cube root function, now the domain and range for this is all real numbers, because you could cube root negative numbers. So, oh, geez. Well, I'm going to have to move that back up. Here we go. Here we go. There we are. Okay, that should be good enough. Domain. All real numbers, range, all real numbers. So thinking about perfect cubes, like zero is a perfect cube, the cube root of zero is zero, so you'd have zero, zero. One is another perfect cube, cube root one, it's one. So it'd be a point at one, one. The only other perfect cube that would fit to the right here is eight. Q 
cube root of 8 is 2. So you're going to have a point at 8, 2. So it looks pretty similar so far to the square root function, but again, we can also dip into the negatives. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So again, the zeros are, where does it cross the x-axis? And it crosses at 0, 0. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? All right. Now let's talk about the general formula for transformations. Here's the general formula. You got like y equals a times x minus h to the n power. We were when we did this earlier in the year, it was mostly with the quadratic one, so it was to the second power, um, plus your k. So the a in front, this can tell you if, if it's positive, well, if negative means it's reflected, and if it's greater than one, I would show you a stretch. And if A is less than 1, that would be a compression. So that's what that number in front can indicate for you. The H grouped in with the X. That would give you a right or left shift. So if it says minus H, shift right. If it says plus h, you shift left that many units. Easy enough. And then k, the number at the end that isn't grouped with the x with multiplication or in parentheses with it, that would give you your vertical shift. So if it says plus k, you go up. It says minus k, you go down. Splendid. We're going to use the parent function as a guide to graph these transfer or these functions. So if you look here, the only difference between this and the rational function, which don't draw this, but if you remember our rational function was like this, and it went up towards the asymptotes. So we're just going to be shifting this some way. Um, you look at the denominator, and grouped with the x, it says minus 4. So that means we're going to shift it to the right 4 units, which means there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x plus 4. So if you give yourself a dashed line there at 4, it didn't change vertically at all. So we're still going to have this asymptote at zero. Now remember, our first points were like one, one, and negative one, negative one. So it was over one, up one from the asymptote, and down one, left one from the asymptote. So if you can remember that, it'll be pretty easy to graph. Just go diagonal, one each direction from those asymptotes, and then cruise alongside the asymptote with your curve. Another option here. Substituting values for x, create a table, solve them, and get your corresponding y. Boom, done. That'll work. But how much easier was that? All right, now this is a cube root function, which again, you don't need to draw this, but the cube root function starts at 0, 0, there's a point at 1, 1, and then 8, 2, because the cube root of 8 is 2. And then it also dips into the negative versions of those two. So the only transformation with this is it's going to shift it up 5. So really, I'm going to start up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then our other point was 1, 1. So it's like up 1 over 1 from here. We also had 1 at negative 1, negative 1. So it would go, here's our start of the curve. Then our next point was 8, 2. So it was over 8 and up 2 from our 0. So if we did that here, we'd go over 8, up 2. There would be our third point of the graph. We could go left, 8, and down 2. 
and that would give us the left half. Now, if we were to state the domain and the range here, domain for this first one, remember domain is your x values, so it's everything except for the vertical asymptote, which is at 4. Same thing with the range. It's all of your, all real numbers except for the horizontal asymptote, which is at 0 still. So we'd say y such that y is not equal to 0. Domain and range for um, cube root functions is nice and easy because it's all real numbers. So we could just say domain negative infinity to positive infinity, range negative infinity to positive infinity. Sweet, sweet, we're cruising, we're making math work. Given the following graph, describe the transformation from the parent function and write the equation to state the domain and range. That's a lot to do. Now this is a rational parent function where it starts with 1 over x. But let's think about how this is different. Well, I see it's shifted left 2. That's the only change. Now, when it is shifted right or left, remember that's grouped in with the x in the denominator. So the equation we could say f of x equals 1 over, and it's shifted left 2. So that would be plus 2. 1 over x plus 2. There is no change vertically, so that's all good. So a domain, we would say all real numbers except for negative 2. So the way we write that is x such that x is not equal to negative 2. Because remember, that would give us a denominator of 0, and you can't divide by 0. And then the range, same thing, all real numbers except for the horizontal asymptote, which is at zero. Why such that y is not equal to zero? I notice I keep doing this. I keep writing my y's right next to each other, but a little bit different. What's going on in here? Did I forget anything else? I think that's it. That's all we need on that one. Oh, description. I put the left two up here, but left two. Left to my own devices. <laughs> Here we go. All right, now this is a square root function, but it's shifted up one unit. So up, oh my gosh, I did it again. And up one. So the square root equation shifted up one, the vertical transformation goes outside the root. So we could say f of x equals square root of x, and then the plus one is not in the square root of it. So domain is x values. Our lowest x value is 0. So we'd say 0 to positive infinity. The range is your y values. The lowest y value we get is 1. So we'd say 1 to positive infinity. That was fun. Oh, boy. Describe the parts, zeros, asymptotes, and moles. So zeros are where it crosses. This one appears to cross at negative 5 and positive 3. I'm going to list them as coordinates, though, because I'm cool like that. So negative 5, 0, and 3, 0. The asymptotes, I see that there's only this vertical asymptote. So, oh my gosh. Every time I change markers, seriously, there's a vertical asymptote at... Um, what is that? One? X equals one. We have to do domain and range on this. Yeah, we probably should. So a domain would be everything except for that vertical asymptote. And such that X is not equal to one. And range, there is no horizontal asymptote on this. So range would just be all real numbers. Cool, let's try it on this one. Let's look for the zeros first. Uh, zeros, I see it only crosses at one zero. Uh, 
Let's see, vertical asymptote. All right, there's one of those at um, zero. And then there's a horizontal asymptote also at zero. Which again is weird because it actually does cross that asymptote. But it's just going to curve back around and like hang even closer to that asymptote after it crosses. That's a very strange function. So as far as domain and range on that, domain x values would be everything except for that vertical asymptote. And then the range, I mean, the highest that this ever went, it never went above positive 1. So we could say that it's definitely less than 1. So if we were to list that in interval notation, we could say, well, it's negative infinity to less than 1. So you would just put the parentheses instead of the bracket that we're used to putting on there. It might be 0 0.5. I don't know, but it's definitely less than one. All right, this one is very strange. Let's check those zeros. Well, it crosses at negative one, one zero. One zero, one zero. The asymptotes, there's a couple of them. There's one at negative two and positive two. Things are plus or minus two. Which then, when we're thinking about our domain there, that would be all real numbers except for plus or minus 2, which you could list those separately. I just ran out of room there. There is a horizontal, horrible horizontal asymptote at 2. So again, then for the range, that would give us all real numbers except for positive 2. Now I'm like trying to be super conscious about the whys and it's looking even worse. All right, let's see what else we got here. Now this one, this one's silly. It doesn't even cross the x-axis, so there are no zeros. None of them. Uh, there is a vertical asymptote. It's kind of hard to see it though. Let's see. I would guess it's about two. A vertical asymptote at x equals two, and that'll affect our domain. There's a horizontal asymptote at zero. So the domain x such that x is not equal to two. Range y such that y is not equal to zero. All right, here we go. We're almost done. All right, now this one does have a zero. It looks like it crosses at six zero. I don't want to mess with anything. All right. There's a vertical asymptote at negative three. There is a horizontal asymptote at 1. So domain and range. Domain is our vertical asymptote. All real numbers except for that vertical asymptote. X is not equal to 3. Range is the horizontal asymptote stuff. So all real numbers except for positive 1. All right, last one. Now this one has some holes in it. If you look, those dots, those are holes. Um, so zeros, but it wants to stick for zeros. Because it's crossing at holes. So there are no zeros on this one. But um, well, we can say that those are holes. There's holes at uh, negative three zero and three zero and five zero. Those are holes in the graph. 
There's vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2, uh, positive 2, and positive 4. There's a horizontal asymptote. Uh, oh, no, there isn't. No horizontal asymptote. So domain is all real numbers except for these vertical asymptotes. Negative 2, 2, 4. Range is going to be all real numbers. I'm getting a little winded. How are you guys doing at home? You good? Good. All right. <gasps> Give me the equation. Find the stuff. Graph it. All right, this is our last page. We've only got about five minutes before class starts. So we're going to factor it first. Uh, so we have 2x over x plus 2 and x minus 2. Remember, the numerator gives us the zeros, so we're going to have a 0 at 0. The denominator gives us those vertical asymptotes, so we're going to have v a's at x equals negative 2 and positive 2. Uh, holes. Uh, vertical or horizontal asymptote, the denominator has a higher degree. So the horizontal asymptote will be at the line y equals 0. So when the degree is larger, sorry, in the denominator, that one gives you a horizontal asymptote of 0. I'm going to scoot over here uh, and then we'll graph it. All right, so we have that vertical asymptote at negative 2, positive 2. We have a horizontal asymptote at 0, so there's going to be lots of different chunks here. It'll cross at 0, 0, which is weird because we have a horizontal uh, asymptote there. But it's kind of like a hole, but really it's just going to hit that. The asymptotes are like where the lines are going to cruise alongside. So if we were to pick some other numbers to substitute in here, like if we pick the number less than 2, like, let's pick negative 4. Uh, in the original equation, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 4 squared is 16, minus 4 is 12. So this would give us negative 2 thirds of negative 0.7. So negative 4, negative 0.7, there-ish. Uh, if we were to pick negative 3, B negative 6 over 9 minus 4 is 5, so this would come on to negative 1.2. So this is going to be cruising down this way along that asymptote and over this way. Now if we were to choose negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 1 squared is 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so this would come on to positive 0.6 repeating. That would give us the left side of that. If we were to choose positive 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, 1 squared is 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So this would give us negative 0 0.7. Uh, and then if we were to go in the positive direction, if we chose a number like 3, 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 4 is 5. So this comes out to 1.2. Sorry, I'm rushing because I have class in a minute here. And if we were to choose 4, uh, we have 8 over 12, which comes out to that point 7 ish. So that'll give us our curves for our asymptotes. Domain would be uh, everything except for those vertical asymptotes, the range would be everything. Uh, let's see. Last one. If we were to factor this, this would be x plus 4 times x plus 1 over x plus 4 times x minus 3. Now, you'll look and they're both, they both have that x plus 4. Those would cancel out. So that would create a hole at x equals negative 4. 
Now, if we were to substitute that in, well, we don't need to sub it in yet. The zeros come from the numerator, and these would cancel. So now that we know the whole is there, get rid of it. Zero would be negative one. The denominator would tell us those vertical asymptotes at positive three. We have a zero. Oh, shoot, I forgot about the horizontal asymptote. So the, or, the degrees are the same, so the horizontal asymptote would also be at zero. Whew, all right. So we've got the shift to the right of three, uh, and then this is just your standard parent function. But if we were to choose like maybe four to substitute in, four, four plus one is five, four minus three, five over one is five. So we have a point at four, five, one, two, three, four, five. If we were to choose five, five plus one is six, uh, five minus three is two, six over two is three, so five. Three. This would give us our curve on the right here. And if we were to choose like two and one, one, two, uh, one plus one is two, one minus three is negative two, so this would give us negative one. One, negative one is there. We have two, two plus one is three, two minus three is negative one, this would give us negative three, two, negative three. Cruising. Cruising. But we're going to have a hole at that x equals negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Give yourself a little hole on that line. That was a doozy. All right, this is the last thing, which is good because I only have one minute. Uh, the zeros are negative 4 and 2. So that, remember that goes in the numerator. So it would be x plus 4 times x minus 2. And there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So that would be x minus 1 in the denominator. We have to say anything else then? All right, here we have zeros at 0 and 5. So that would look like x times x minus 5. There's a vertical asymptote at positive 1. That would be x minus 1 over there. We did it with 10 seconds to spare. Well done.